welcome to my Xbox and me episode 469. <laughs> nice. 69. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Mr. Too Fresh Crash. Crash, how are you in a jumper? I have an air conditioner running on me right now. Okay, so. I was good. In the yeah. UK right now, it is yeah. absolutely sweltering. It is disgusting. I hate it when it's this hot in the UK. Yeah. Anywhere else in the world, I love it. The UK, both, I hate it. You both look like you are sweating profusely. Hey, hey, hey don't worry about my shiny this year. I don't have my makeup woman with me this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the man on the ones and twos, Mr. Paul Deesborn. It's a shame this is a video podcast because I will be topless right now. Otherwise, it is so goddamn warm. I was literally topless before I came on and mm-hmm, got changed mm-hmm. into my English shirt. England are playing today, uh, for those who don't know. So either I'm going to be very happy or very sad. Either way, they're through to the next round. But we've just been playing absolutely shocking. But you lot don't care because that's sports talk. Uh, if you didn't know, this is my Xbox Me, our weekly Xbox podcast. You can get it early over on patreon.com slash mcfixer. Support the show financially. And of course, find us everywhere. YouTube, Twitch, and all of that good stuff. I promise, I know we haven't been live with the podcast um, for Patreon supporters. I had a lot of stuff going on in the background. I had a few hospital appointments. There's just a lot going on in life. I promise we'll get back to regular scheduling real, real soon with all of that good stuff. Shout out to our Patreon producer, Aaron God, and of course, Sam, for one last time for this month. Uh, topic of the show this week, not much news going on, to be honest with you, boys. Uh, so I thought we would talk about 2024 as a whole. 2024 is, of course, upon us. We are in it. Video games have come out. Coming out? That's not really a word. Have come out. Thank you. Mm. There we go. Uh, I said that very weird. I'm sorry. Um, Video games are coming. Yeah. They're, they're definitely coming. coming. What uh-huh. do you think for this year? Because I'm the reason I bring this up is I stream today and I'm in this very big lull period for games right now for myself. I am I'm sat there going, oh, I really want to stream. I really want to obviously work and you know do all of that stuff that I've got to do. But I look at the games that I need to play and I'm just not compelled to play them so far through 2024. So I thought we could go through, talk about what games we've really enjoyed for this year and some we haven't. And overall, what we thought so far of 2024. Halfway through the year, it's the six, you know, we're almost into July. So we are halfway through. Um, I guess we'll start off with, if you had to go to heads right now, Spawn, what is your game of the year? I'm interested. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Ah, interesting. It's yeah, a, uh, yeah, it's yeah, a weird on. one. So it's it was very close for a while, but like so it was going to be between Like a Dragon and Final Fantasy VII. But of course. I've just had so many like, little issues with Final Fantasy the not like game breaking or anything like that but just like pacing and the mini quest not being great and all this kind of stuff and it a lot of, felt like a little bit of padding every now and again whereas with like a dragon like every moment to moment uh gameplay experience was fantastic nothing overlived its welcome and the story was brilliant uh, mm-hmm. and i think it did a really good job of onboarding new players while also respecting the lineage of what came before it I think uh, that's so yeah. the, the big thing about that game, right? It's a, it's ultimately it's a game built in nostalgia, the mm-hmm. entire thing, but it never alienates me, the player who doesn't understand all of what this game is telling you, which yeah. is really it's really it's a really good balance of like those two worlds. Um yeah, you're probably right. They're probably those the, yeah, those two are definitely the top two games that I've played this year by a mile. Third being oh Damn. Damn. Now I've got to think. What would I put third? Um, can't put Elden Ring, right? That was fifth of like that year. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. not, that I'm going to say you've not played the DLC yet, so you can't Lost put that Crown? in there yet. Oh, I, lost, I was about to say Prince of Persia Lost Crown. Yeah. It's yeah. is probably third on you my were list. You were really, right really big on that when it dropped. Yeah. Well, again, no. it's one of those games, right, that I, I didn't. I didn't have an affinity for the genre. Not mm, Prince yeah. of Persia number one and Metrovania Lights number two. I felt like it added some really cool um, quality of life fixes to a Metrovania like uh, game, which then made it more appealing to someone like me and new to that series. Um, but yeah, the, the Like a Dragon, if I had gone to. 
gun to my head, pick a game. No, it has to be Final Fantasy Rebirth. I, yeah. Only because I've never had a game outside of the Resident Evil series stick w with me the experience that long afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like, after I beat Final Fantasy Rebirth, I didn't want to play anything else. I get that. Um, the, and, again, I've got nothing yeah. to say. Like, start like, again, no spoilers, never spoiling anything. Uh, but the, the story is one of the best stories uh, around uh, in gaming in general. Like, the Final Fantasy story for Final Fantasy VII from OG and on, on and with re the remakes is fantastic. And I can never say anything against them. But yeah, like, my only problem is the little bits within the game itself, the gameplay side. Oh, yeah. You, I, I think you're 100% right. I think definitely um padding wise mm -hmm. i do i agree i 100 percent agree with you on there are certain elements in that game that become tiresome after you've done it the umpteen of time you know um but if you were to play that game from just start to finish as a linear golden path per se experience i think maybe i would of maybe i would have enjoyed it more but i did enjoy my experience as a whole um with rebirth anyway chris have you beat it yet no, I haven't. This guy. I have that wasn't meant to be a loaded question. I do apologize. It was a loaded question. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to attack you. <laughs> was I'm sorry. Question. I do apologize. I wasn't what? trying to map you. I know how that feels. I've been there. You know, I've been attacked. Now that I've been attacked, yeah. I'm a changed person. I'm oh, a changed you're a different person. person. Yeah. You're completely different. Oh, He's humble. He's humble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I have. It's next on my list to beat. I'm very close to ending on that. That's next on my list, and then like a dragons after that. Those are the two next games I'm beating, regardless. Yeah, I would definitely suggest Like a Dragon to, to yeah. be played, for, especially for Xbox I think game I of the year. To so as well. Yeah. 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 But you say that, Chris, you had to play Alan Wake and never did that. So. Yeah. I don't regret that. <laughs> oh, I want yeah. you to. <laughs> There's no regret. There's no regret whatsoever. I respect I it. I respect it. I know. Um, it's not my type of game. Like, I know. <laughs> I know why I had to play it. I know yeah. that if I played it, I wouldn't have gotten the enjoyment that you both got from that game. Great. Fair. That's fair. Yeah, if it feels... I don't know. What do you... Like, generally for the for the year, how do you feel about the year of gaming right now, Chris? We'll go with you first, Chris. Like, yeah. we've had games, like you just said, we've had games like Final Fantasy, we've had Like a Dragon, uh, we've had some brand new Prince of Persia games here and there, um, a bunch of Helldivers 2... Um, yeah, you know it, we've had even games like Content Warning, uh, Grey Zone Warfare. There's been a lot of different experiences out there. Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Lots of really great, amazing <laughs> experiences like Suicide Squad. I mean, he's um, like to be. I, I keep saying it, and I, I stand by it. I would like to be suicide. I would love for us to just because it's only about ten hours. Just I'd love for all out. three of us one weekend. We just say, hey. We're streaming on the My Xbox and Me account. We're just going to batter through this. I can do that. I mean, we got like three-ish hours through though, so it's like, it should be like another... That's true. That's a good point. Six or something like that. We, we're like yeah. a good... We could probably do it in like one sitting if we were like, let's take a Saturday or whatever. And we could, yeah, I think we should. Yeah, just just, 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 just to say we did it. Yeah. Yeah, um, um, yeah how are how you feeling? I feel like this was a good year so far, to be honest. I think... Well, thinking about this year and thinking about it in a vacuum of just this year, it's good. I think with the knowledge of the year we had last year, this year looks kind of lackluster. But that's because last year was a amazing game, amazing game, amazing year for games from yeah. top to bottom. But I mean, well, if absolutely. you look at this year, we've gotten Helldivers, we've gotten Lost Crown, which has critical acclaim. We got mm -hmm. Tekken 8. Um, infinite wealth uh persona 3 reloaded you got dragon's dogma which is the perfect seven you'll ever play <laughs> <laughs> i still haven't got to uh, that because everyone everybody i hear talk about that game is like i really like this game but i also really don't like this game in a yeah. very strange it's, way where i'm like you i could, don't want to put my time into that yeah. if you were to like take out if you were to look at like all games that fit in a seven category and like judge them based off that there's no doubt dragon's dogma 2 is like a 10 in the 7 category <laughs> oh yeah the way it's i look at sevens yeah the way yes. i look at it's dragon's really dogma game. yeah sorry yeah i was gonna say the way i look at dragon's dogma is it is the most expansive puddle i've ever seen 
Like there's, mm. the, it is very vast and like there's a lot to do in it, but it is very like surface deep. Like oh, the, yeah. the story is, eh, I, and it's all about the combat. And there's yeah, so much to do yeah, in that yeah, combat. I agree with that. The story, yeah. the world, the way you interact with the world in certain mm -hmm. cases just doesn't feel great. But when you get into combat, it's like one of those things where it's like, I would rate Dragon's Dogma as a seven. I think it's a seven. I would rate it higher than I would certain eight or even possibly nine games out of like personal enjoyment. But wow. I couldn't sit there and tell you like it's a better game than X, Y, and Z because it's not. There's like big flaws with the game. And I think the game does well despite those flaws, but they still take away from the experience of the game. Um, but yeah, I, I think this was, I think it was a good year. I think specifically if you were a JRPG fan, the year started off strong with Final Fantasy, uh, Persona 3, and uh, Like a Dragon. Um, and now you have Shadow of the Erd Tree. I don't think RPGs Why is it Ronan? Been, if you're a PlayStation Rise fan, Ronin. Rise of Ronin came out. Yeah, and, Stellar and Blade as well. Stellar Blade. Again, there's a lot of games that have come out just because maybe they haven't come to the Xbox platform. Um, yeah. Like I said, we had we had some of the, my I had some of the most fun playing Content Warning with you boys. Mm -hmm. That was a game that, that was you know, on the surface yeah. level, I didn't expect to be fun, and we just had a blast playing that. Um, yeah, it's been. Yeah, Again, we sound like the year's over. The year's nowhere near over. We're still, we're still. You look, if we look forward for a second, it's, you know, we still got, um, you still got, Flintlock, uh, Dungeons of Hinterburg, um, you've still got New Final Fantasy fourteen, um, Dawn Trial. If you're into that, um, we've got Black Mift, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, Dustborn, Concord. And then a bunch of games that we're still waiting for release dates on um, as well. There's still so much. Silent Hill 2 remake. Like, yeah. the list goes on and on and on. And then obviously, I've not even mentioned some of the big hitters, you know, Black Ops 6 and et cetera, et cetera. Fable. Um, oh, no, Fable's next year. Um, Fable. Yeah, we'll see. Assassin's Creed. <laughs> New Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed. Star Wars Outlaws. Star Wars, uh, Indiana yeah. Jones. Uh, can we? I am super excited for Star Wars Outlaws. Same. Very Way much. more than I should be. No, no, but like, I know. I'm not I know a Star Wars guy. Like, I shouldn't I, be excited for this game. I think is I'm it, there with you, Fix, right now. Question. Or, is, I it, I, is it because it, the showings have just looked really good? Or is it also... I, or is it because it's Massive who did Division? No, I don't... I don't, I don't even know it was no Massive. No disrespect. No, mm -hmm. I knew it was Massive, but no disrespect. I don't think it's got anything to do with Massive. I think it's because... I'm just interested in an open world game right mm -hmm. now. Like mm -hmm. everything I've been playing is again, I'm not the JRPG guy usually, right? But I've played of Fancy and um Like a Dragon and then before that a few other games as well. Where you're like, I'm sort of just looking forward to an open world game. I'm looking and I know obviously that they're not they haven't specifically said um what's gonna happen in terms of like the formula. We haven't seen exactly the, the UB formula yet for Star Wars. But I like Ubisoft games. I know it's not yeah. it's not a coincidence that I I work for uh, I work for Ubisoft, you know. I do enjoy <laughs> Ubisoft titles and, and speaking of sevens, skull and bones. <clears throat> just Sam. Just Sam. Mm. But yeah, I'm just I don't know. I don't know what's got me got I, me super into it really. It's just a new story, open world Seems pretty self-explanatory. Job of the heart. I know that character. It's not. It, I'm sure there's going to be so much more to it that I'm going to miss. So much context that we're going to come and talk on this podcast, and you're going to be like, I'm going to be like, where's Jar Jar? And everyone's going to be like, shut up, Fixer. The only thing that would get fixed at like a big fanboy moment is if Jar Jar shows up in that game. The clip will be going viral if Jar Jar shows up, bro. I promise you. I will upload that clip multiple times to TikTok until it goes viral. Until the algorithm takes it, I won't give up. I respect. I it. think uh, I think Outlaws had a really good showing the last time it was there, and I think that combined with Assassin's Creed, the new Assassin's Creed just shows like a new level of I want to say detail or like something with uh, Ubisoft's open world formula to a degree, where it does look like it's getting that upgrade, and it's been like sort of stuck in the past a little bit for a while. And some yeah. of us like that. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. I don't... <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> they could have kept doing what they were doing and people would have... Like, there would have been enough people that enjoyed that experience for it the, to be fun. Do you know yeah. what it is? I feel like... You know, like, there's some game companies where we look at, like, Rockstar and we go, like, we're expecting them to move the needle. Mm -hmm. We're expecting yeah. it. Like, if, they, if GTX 6 comes out and doesn't move the needle, it's like, 
you fell off. You you didn't you didn't <laughs> do what we we thought you could do, right? Yeah. Where and this is no no disrespect to Ubisoft in the slightest, in my opinion, right? Of like they do something for me the same way the PS2 era did. Where like you knew like that type of game. Like I always mm-hmm. say about like I want Gears of War was the example, right? Back in the day where I'm like, I want this to be a specific experience, which is like a bomb, ba bomb, ba bomb, ba bomb, ba bomb. And Ubisoft have that formula for me so far where I'm like, yeah, I love running around and getting lost and then going, oh, I'm going to climb up there, sink. And all the things people are like very critical of Ubisoft for, I absolutely love. Um, which, yeah, it, it, it's um, massive, massive doing it though. Should we'll, we'll, we'll find out, you know. We know the we know they can make open world games, we know they can, yeah, they can do. Um, I, I don't think I'm gonna care about the story in this game at all. You think it's gonna be like maybe a pleasant surprise for you that if you do enjoy it? I hope so. It's a I, secondary I thing for you, yeah, yeah. It's just it just isn't it isn't the thing on top of my head right now where I'm like, I'm looking forward to Outlaws, and it's like because of the story, yeah. it's like, no, I'm looking forward to even even the dog fighting, I'm like. Mm. That looks arcadey and, stu- and very easy. That looks fun. Where like Starfield was like, engines boost here and put a shield. And, and I'm like, no, I'm out. No, just, point, just get click, me out of this. Shoot. Get yeah, me out of this. Just fly around. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Yep, I'm in. That would yeah. do. I think I'm like you in so much as that, like, I love the Ubisoft formula. Uh, I love what they do. Um, did the climbing up a tower, sinking it and moving to the next one for the first hour of gameplay get a bit tiring? A little bit but i feel like they keep offering enough in there for it to be enjoyable for me uh and yeah like as like you said i am so excited for an open world star wars game because mm. i am a star wars fan a uh, first mm? a first ever open world game mm. i don't think that's an accurate statement no that's, that's, what, they if I'm wrong. that's, that's what they keep saying what they say. now i'm pretty like I said, and, I, and then every time we see it i keep saying star wars the old republic <laughs> was an open world MMO. Just saying. I'm just saying, I'm just saying what they're saying. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the it's messenger. A, it's the first open world Star Wars game on console. Um, but yeah, no, I'm super excited to see what they do in that world. And like I say, we've seen what Massive can do with the division. And yeah, I can't wait to see what they do in that universe. And like you say, the uh, the dogfight looks fun and uh, almost brainless it's like point click shoot yep. have fun uh dodge a few asteroids i'm i'm here for that and yeah i can't wait to see how the story plays out mm. where, where are we where have you come down on this year so far despawn um similar to crash i think this year has been fun and good and great playing games uh not for the you know the general uh gaming industry as a whole but the games themselves have been really good but comparing them to last year it's it's a different kettle of fish like i feel like this first six months have been great uh like i don't feel like i've gone a month without having something interesting and new to play but as i'm looking forward there's not many huge titles that i'm excited for like i say indiana jones uh star wars outlaws and uh Assassin's Creed Shadows. Assassin's Creed Shadows. Yeah, those are the big three that are shouting out to me. Um, and as I look forward, I'm just looking at a thing here. I like, there's nothing really huge jumping out. I mean, I know obviously Crash is going to be super excited for Smite Two. We all yeah. have to play Smite Two with Crash. You yeah, understand we have to, that, we right? Have to, yeah, I know. Okay, I know yeah, as long yeah. as you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. No, that's <laughs> like that's a non-negotiable. Like we yeah, yeah. we have to. We have to play with Smite 2 with Crash. It's like if a Resident Evil game come out and it had co-op and Crash refused to play with me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, I would be heartbroken. Yeah, I get that. Uh, yeah, no, I'm fine with that. And then, yeah, we got, like, uh, obviously Call of Duty at the end of the year, which I'm excited for. But, like, there's nothing... There's nothing at the level of, like, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Or there's nothing at the level of, like, the Cyberpunk DLC and Alan Wake 2 from last year that's kind of got me like i am waiting for the moment that that's available to play everything for the second half of the year is very much a case of like i'm looking forward to it but Mm. i don't think anything's going to hit as much as last year did for me which is no slight on the development of the games and stuff like that i think they're all going to be fantastic games but it's just like for my personal preference i think just last year hit so hard that this year is going to is this it's a lot to live up to this year i think it's I think the last thing that came out this year that is like a guaranteed like 
big hitter was Shadow of the Erd Tree, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think we have anything else that's like guaranteed to like make waves a hundred percent across Call the of board. Duty. Call of yeah. Duty. I think Call, I think, yeah. but I Call think, of Duty I does think, that every year. You think Call of Duty more than like the previous years this year? Yeah, because Game mm-hmm. Pass. I just the amount yeah. of people I've spoken to already from a like even my brother in law who was a huge Call of Duty fan and then fell off of Call of Duty and like I'd be like, oh, you go check out Call of Duty. He's like, yeah, it's in Game Pass. I'm like, there's no reason for me not to. I feel like this year, more than most, like, I feel like I can get Haley to play COD this year in a weird way. We're not, maybe mm. not, so maybe not necessarily uh, multiplayer or even the single player, but zombies. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, 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 it's the perfect game for them to launch in Game Pass, where it's like, we've got, the campaign which people who care about that are going to play it i'm going to play it hopefully we all play it to talk about it um and then you've got the multiplayer you've got warzone obviously doing its own thing still and then you've got zombies which zomb i feel like game pass for zombies for me is going to be huge because the amount of times i'm like i really want to play zombies but no one wants to play Mm -hmm. because they don't own the game and it's like oh i would play that if i had it because i don't really care about the multiplayer and now it's like oh just download it on game pass boom yeah i feel like i feel like it's gonna explode i really do maybe i'm wrong cod's already you know cod's cod like we're not sitting here acting like cod isn't cod but yeah i've got i've got a feeling that the next game to make the wave and which is what which is what you said right is gonna be i think black myth's gonna come out and do one of two things it's either gonna come out and it's going to be amazing and again we'll talk about it in the in the news in a little bit um and we'll be sat here as xbox fans who unless we plan on a different platform right so wouldn't that thumbs waiting for this 10 out of 10 fantastic experience or it's going to come out and be a seven yep and it's gonna be like we can see this looks good it's, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful game we can see this is their first game yeah you know and i think it will go one of two ways so that has the ability to be the wave in which you're speaking of um and then yeah i don't know i'm looking i'm looking through this list now of games um that are to come and i'm like yeah you're, you're kind of right marvel rivals maybe I, maybe that, i just don't know if it's gonna i don't think I don't it's the it's same gonna, like wave no nah, like, I, I think you'll have people talking about it i don't think you'll have like the whole industry tuned into it no that's gonna be but a would diehard you, minority i think like the people would that you have said that about overwatch I know, obviously, yes. Blizzard, and yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, because people were already hyped for it before that came out. Like, from when they announced they were doing it, and whenever beta footage showed up for that game, people were, like, in tune with it because of the name Blizzard had. I think if Blizzard announced something like that today, I'd tell you no. Yeah, like, no, Blizzard I, back then could do no wrong. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like uh, Bethesda. Yep. Yeah. In that same ilk. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um... Yeah, and then yeah, for me, like yeah, I don't know, I agree with you guys. It's it's been a weird year, just sort of super front front heavy for me. Like a lot of a lot of great experiences early on, and now I'm sat here and playing a lot of X Defiant, which again, st- gruelingly hard, um, but still a lot of fun. I really like what they've made a lot of changes, and the, some of the changes they've made have made it a lot more fun. So just simple things like leveling up guns now is a lot quicker. I'm leveling mm-hmm. up a gun um, per round. It feels like. So even if I'm not winning, even if I'm not top of the leaderboard, I still feel like I'm progressing. Very much like Fortnite, right? Fortnite, I think, has like the best formula for this of like, you play a game of Fortnite and lose, but you still feel like you're progressing every single time. I feel like X Define has done quite a good job with that for leveling at this moment in time. Um, And then um, they've also fixed, obviously, like crouch spamming. I hope they can fix bunny hopping. Um, which I just don't know how they fix bunny hopping if I'm on this with you. Um without taking away a lot of the fun for some people that enjoy it. Mm. Ultimately it's a skill issue. I'm just not as good as these people that are doing what they're doing. Um <laughs> But yeah, I, I, it started so strong with Final Fantasy and Like a Dragon that are both hundred plus hour games, right? That then you, you do sit around sort of looking around like Okay, what now? I'm 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 itching for another one of those experiences in a way, um, and there isn't one of those coming for the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. You should have jumped back into a uh, Destiny fix. Destiny no. was good. Yeah, this latest no. expansion has been good. If Vix wouldn't mm-hmm. care, because Vix never played for the story. No. <laughs> no. Bro, Bro, I played Destiny. I went to a midnight launch for Destiny One. 
That's yeah. wild to me. That's that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> that's that's crazy. <laughs> like, and and again, I've I've played Destiny one, played Destiny two, beat the, both of the stories, beat some of the early expansions as well. Me and you did a twenty four hour stream of Destiny yeah. two. I don't. I think yeah. it was. End, I think it ended up being like twenty hours, but of us just beating the entire story in one day. Yeah, and then. I don't know, man. Just the story never got me ever. Like I liked Cade, and then he died, and then now he's back or he ain't back. I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> like let's be honest. Like, I just Destiny just never did it for me. You know me. I need, I need gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. Big cutscene that's pretty simple to understand. I'm not a smart yeah. man. I'm yeah, not a smart like man. The, the fall, here's this Thinking. little bit of lore that you'll get well, here that exactly. adds so yeah, much. That like is, you're, you're not that. Unless I'm you're not the that. you're not for it. Bro, even <laughs> bro, honestly, I watched a Resident Evil lore video the other day. I was just mm-hmm. bored. I was like, oh, let me just watch. And even that, I was watching again. Huh. There's a lot of stuff I, I didn't pick up on. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like, you need to... I, I am the epitome of like... I'm, I'm in this very weird spot, I feel like, where I am a filthy casual in gaming, in a way. You know, yeah. like, I love sports titles, but yeah, I'll then play... A, a Yakuza like a dragon for a hundred hours plus. I'll play Resident Evil in the Chronicle Dual Aldar and I'll learn speed from it. I'm like, I'm in this very weird spot, you know? I'm playing Elden Ring, right? And everyone's like, oh, have you done this quest? I'm like, does this game even have quests? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm just, I just ain't yeah. got a clue. Like, it needs to be. I think that's why Ubisoft games speak to me, right? It's very much check marks on a map, go mm-hmm. cross it off. And that's, I think that's why I fell in love with The Witcher as well. Because yeah. that was very much, I had like the perfect balance of the two of like, check marks on the map, but when you come into these secondary stories, they feel like main quests. Yeah. I, said on, I said on stream today, actually, I was, I was like, I'm tempted to jump into Cyberpunk. Ooh. Yeah, because obviously I haven't played Cyberpunk, but I played when I picked it up when it first came out, very broken for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, yeah, maybe Cyberpunk right now? Because again, I'm looking for that next big experience. I, I mean, I think it would be a good call. I think it is like sort of what you're looking for. Yeah, I think that's the only problem you'd have to get over is that's it. old games old. Yeah. 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 Uh, Although saying that, I mean, like it is a nice looking game, and it is now oh, feature. No. It, I was going to say it is very feature complete now in the fact that they stopped development on it, so that is the definitive way to play it now. Look, yeah, old games old does not mean it's an ugly old game. I've played yeah. plenty of old, ugly games. It's not, it's not I getting twisted. ugly games. I do. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, I'm friends with you. That's, you're an old, ugly thing, you know? Younger you're getting on a bit now, Chris. I'm a you're young, ugly bit. thing. Get you're it getting correct. on a bit. It's it's a young, ugly thing. I never want to hear the word old <laughs> reference to me coming out of your mouth. <laughs> These yeah. ones older than me. Then call him old, why are you calling me old? Because I'm, I'm not ugly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. He's not ugly. Come on. Um, but yeah, I think like overall this year, I mean, it's been fun. It's been mm-hmm. fun. I do think next year, I, I don't know. I just, I, I just, I hate these low periods. And it always happens around this time, by the way. Like I'm, I've booked my holiday at the perfect time in a way. You know, I'm going away from, so I'm away from July 12th to the 24th, something like that. I'm like two weeks I'm away, right? Don't mm-hmm. worry, the podcast is still going to be happening, taking a sub with me. You know, it's not a different type of holiday when I go to Texas. It's like the home away from home. So yeah, as long as the Starlink stays up, we're fine. We can do the pot. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Come on, Elon, um, dollars down. Yeah, Elon, please. But yeah, it's, um, it, it, I'm going away and I was looking away at like what games I'm going to miss. I'm like, Fleet, I think I'm missing that uh, Flint Flintlock. I think that's like the only game that comes out that I am interested in in July, right? Yeah, I think summer's mm. notoriously like usually not that great for gaming mm. until like you have the odd drop that's like, hey, we're dropping in the middle of summer and yeah. it takes over the whole season because nothing else drops in that period. You got you got yeah. First Ascendant, which is July 2nd, which I'm looking forward to trying out. Once Humans fully comes out July 9th, um, uh, Darkest Dungeon 2 if you're interested in that mm-hmm. um, on PlayStation 5 uh, like I say Dungeon of Hinterberg I'm looking forward to playing that Flintlock I'm looking forward to playing that but you know they're not they're not going to be these crazy long experiences I wouldn't expect so I'll be yeah. able to catch up and play them when I get back 
So yeah, so I've yeah. played the demos for both of those, and yeah, they're not going to be like huge, sprawling experiences. And to be honest, I'm not sure if both of them are going to agree with you anyway. Oh really? Yeah, Flintlock, not for me at all, and it's not because it's like looks like a Souls like because it's not really a Souls like. It just the combat and the gameplay. It, it feels very much like a a throwback to like the xbox one era of like 3d platformers uh with a kind of souls like style to the gameplay uh, uh but dungeon hintberg is really fun uh but again that is very i think that's a, a bit of a weird one because it very much leans into like the town building aspect alongside the dungeon crawling as well um but the the demo kind of gives you like the first area uh, uh and it feels fun but i don't show how much longevity is a is going to be in there for you yeah well i guess we'll see right yeah. guess we'll see um yeah i mean that's a good conversation but let's move on shall we uh this week's dashboard uh obviously we've been talking about it a little bit but hotly anticipated black myth wulong is delayed on xbox series x this was kind of last week's news um but uh, Xbox kind of came out and had something to say on this. We, we actually kind of alluded to it right last week um, about Jez having to correct a few people out there, but um, this is the quote. We're excited, for the, we're excited for the launch of Black Myth Wulong on Xbox Series X and S and are working on with Game Science to bring the game to our platforms. We cannot comment on deals made by our partners with other platform holders, but we remain focused on making Xbox the best platform for gamers and great games are at the center of that end quote. So yeah, this is a this is obviously a sucky one. We found this out during the PlayStation, PlayStation State of Play, right? If I'm not mistaken, it like we found that it all came out no, after that, no. right? That it got delayed. No, it was a uh, Summer Games. Summer Game oh, Fest. you're right, Summer Games Fest. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it yeah, kind of sucky. I'm kind of sick of this happening to Xbox. If I'm honest, of like. We've had this. We've had obviously the Capcom collection not coming to Xbox as well, um, which is a whole different conversation together. Um, but how do Microsoft figure this out with with developers and publishers? Because this is happening more and more and more. And do we think this is a Series S issue, or is this just a case of PlayStation to put their hand in their pocket and paid? to make this happen yeah, which i'm not saying is wrong by the way mm. like business is business do what you have to do you haven't got any first party games coming really other than lego um uh, horizon. horizon adventures yeah yeah and then astro yeah. bot like those are not going to move they're both very they're both not very playstation games if we're being honest with you like in terms of like what we expect from playstation mm, um, yeah. so yeah like w w where'd you come down this one crash um for me it's a case of like if it wasn't the Series S, I feel like Microsoft would have just said it's it's not a Series S issue or whatever the case is. I think like that wording is just so confusing that I'm like Microsoft gave a non statement statement of like we don't discuss our partners deals or whatever, because that could mean literally anything that could mean they haven't spoken to them. That could mean their buddy buddy talking every day. And Microsoft has seen the text exchanges. We got no clue what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, 100 percent. What do you think it is? I think it's a Series S issue. Oh, wow. Like, if I had to like, put the money on it. Um, yeah. Look, I, I think, like, once, like, if ball, like, once the Baldur's Gate thing happened, I think, like, the floodgates open for that. Yeah. That, like, that, that being a possibility of stuff getting delayed on Xbox because of the Series S, because it's clear that this, we're at the point in the generation cycle where the Series S is starting to lose steam. Mm. Ah. Xbox won't do this again, right? I hope not. Another Series S? Yeah. Well, like, we won't see an Xbox come out with the two SKU system again. We will. You think so? Yeah, they moved so many units because of the Series S. Mm. Like, if you take out Baldur's Gate and Wukong, the Series S, even with those, like, take out Wukong because we don't know the case because that could 100% yeah, yeah. still be a Sony case. I'm not saying that's not the case. But even if you take out the uh, that and you're looking at, you're not looking at Baldur's Gate, Series S has done huge for become, helping Xbox become Nintendo for certain people's households, where it's like they have a PlayStation or they have a PC, 
but they'll get a Series S for their other room. Or they'll get a yeah. Series S as a side console or whatever the case for Game Pass, Game Pass machine, whatever the case is. Series S is very successful for Xbox. Mm. Yeah, I know you're, you're 100% right. I just I feel like stuff like this, though, it's like, I guess we'll see for the next gen, right? When we, when we when that event eventually comes around and we see price point, I feel like pricing is what is key when it comes to these consoles, like things like this, like, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's um. What do you reckon, Despawn? PlayStation or Series X? Uh, Series S. Sorry. Um, I think it's neither, but they all kind of have an effect. I think, like we've said, this is um Game Science's first AAA game at this kind of level, and I think what they've done is they've just prioritized PlayStation with it being the bigger market for console development and it's they've got to the point where it's like all right we're ready to release oh actually there's a bit more work that needs to go into porting it successfully over to the xbox side as well because it's not just a one for one click a switch and it works uh there is a lot of porting it between the two so yeah i think it's probably more that than anything else like they'll have developed it pc wise maybe it's easier apart from pc to playstation ironically with them being microsoft products but um yeah, I think it's probably, yeah, it's more that than anything else. Yeah, I don't think it's a case of like PlayStation have gone, yo, bit of money and we just give it to us, yeah? I I think to add some credence to what you're saying also, it's like when you port it over to Xbox because of the Series S, and I'm not saying it's the Series S's fault, you do have mm -hmm. to port it over to two different machines and make sure it works well on both. Um, Again, yeah, but then Devil's Advocate, if you're making it for PC, you have to port it for a thousand different configurations. Mm. yeah but that's but then you've got there's minimum so much thing. onus on pc yeah. on the owner of a pc yeah. as opposed to where gaming it's like you it's on that game it has to work on that there's not graphic updates there's not mm -hmm. what type of hard drive do you have what type of graphics card you have what type of processor you have like yeah. a lot there's, of the pc conversation is on the the user of the pc yeah there's, there's minimum specs i guess yeah so you need to hit a certain base level for your hardware yourself yeah yeah, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, I, don't, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's a case of PlayStation pay, paying for exclusivity, especially when they've spent all this time. They've never said that it was going to be exclusive for PlayStation. They said it's, it was coming out everywhere, and then it's just got to this point when it's release time. It's like, uh, actually, we're just going to be releasing it on PlayStation for now. And I think they've come out and said they're still working on it for Xbox. So yeah, it, if they paid for it for PlayStation, whatever the PlayStation Direct they had the state of play this would have been there mm -hmm. without a doubt. I think that would have been a deal on both sides where um, Black Myth Wukong would have wanted the sort of airtime on a PlayStation console if they're going to be like a quote unquote exclusive. Mm. Um, and then for Sony, it's like, hey, we have this game coming out that's only coming out on PlayStation or whatever the case is. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. yeah. It's the same with the, when they did the Final Fantasy VII initially and it was like big massive asterisk along the bottom is like only going to be available on PlayStation. Like that would have happened if it was a marketing deal or anything like that, or it was like it'll only be on PlayStation until at least this date. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is definitely going to be more a uh, development side issue rather than a paying for exclusivity. Okay. Yes. Me, I'm pro, honestly, who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? I've got an Xbox and a PlayStation and a fucking Switch and a fucking everything. I do what the fuck I want. No, about, oh, yeah. aside, if you're someone who, if you're someone who has been waiting for this, I understand. If you're disappointed, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. And if the place you play is predominantly on Xbox, then I understand why you will feel a type of way. It's a, it's a hard one, right? There's nothing more you can really do. I I just hope Xbox, if it is a case of, and I do think it's the Series S, um, hence why I feel like, once again, clumsy messaging, clumsy wording from Xbox. Surprise, surprise. Um, I just hope they learn from it and decide not to do the Series uh, series consoles next gen. That's all. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we've had the conversation, you see it happen all the time, where it's like, this console is holding back the Series X, and that's not something that I want for gaming, period. I don't want I want developers to be able to have as much power as they can to make the games they want to play make. Um and if the series and Xbox forcing them to make Apparently, games on yeah. that platform is, yeah. is is where the issues lie, right? And I understand yeah. it from a business perspective, but it's just it's just frustrating. 
I think for me, like one of two things needs to happen. And ultimately, I don't think either of these will happen. Microsoft's going to continue doing what they do is one. They stop making a lower skewed version, which I think is the worst of the two. And the other one is like, hey, there will be certain games that will not run on parity with the Series X. I think yeah. this the parity problem is kind of a big issue as well. Like that's the whole reason Baldur's Gate didn't come out earlier on Xbox is because it needed to come out for the Series X and the Series S and it needed to come out like equivalent as equivalent as they can be between the two. Mm. Moving on. About Dev once again asks about Skyrim comparison and points to the Outer Worlds. Quote, I think the best comparison is the Outer Worlds, uh, Patel Patel said, uh, insists. I think that gives a much clearer idea of the scope of the game and also the design and layout. Like the Outer Worlds, Avowed has a series of open zones that are connected and unlock over the course of the game, rather than one giant map that you can walk through from beginning to end. And yeah, in terms of... Uh, the kind of quest structure, the narrative structure, it's a lot closer to the outer worlds as well. End quote. Music to my ears. Yeah. Music to my ears, if I'm being totally honest with you. Um, I really, again, I don't, I am by no stretch of the imagination, like was the biggest outer worlds fan ever. Again, I'm not, those type of games are just not always the games I drive with. Um, but I like this, you know, again, Avowed, I've had an up and down relationship with Avowed. I want Avow to be good. I want Avow to be special. Everything I've seen from it, it doesn't quite look that special and that amazing to me. Um, but this puts me in a mindset where I'm actually happier. I would much rather a smaller experience um, like the Outworlds than I would a Skyrim out uh, Avowed, honestly, if I'm being honest, for me. Um, Avowed was around 20 to 40 hours to complete, if I'm not mistaken. Skyrim, you know, we know how long Skyrim is. Skyrim, Skyrim. Still um, going. So for me, this seems, if, if yeah, I like this. I, li I like this information. I like the fact they've come out and said it. Um, it sets expectations very clear um, for people who may let their expectations get out of whack for a game like Avowed, personally. What do you guys think? Yeah, um, I think for uh, like I kind of echo what you say in regards to like I think having a more structured world that's more densely populated and like this the moment to moment set pieces are kind of more well defined rather than it being that kind of like sandbox where you just run around in Skyrim and you know punch a dragon. Uh, yeah, I kind of like that more for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of excited. Again, I've I've been excited about Valve since it got announced, and like I've I've been kind of following everything that they've been saying. So yeah, like. Just is just an extra little thing that's just like yeah I can't wait for this one to drop. Yeah, I, I think I echo echo those uh, those sentiments from both of you guys. I think we've seen what they do with uh, Outer Worlds, like doing something that size makes a lot of sense. Then oh, we're owned by uh, Microsoft. They have Bethesda, Skyrim, all that stuff. Like they got a team that can make uh, the next Elder Scrolls or whatever. Like you don't need to fill in that void for Xbox. Um, so just continue doing what you're doing. And on top of that, like if you do try and fill that void, you're automatically making a comparison with a game that's re-released almost a million times for whatever reason. Uh, and I don't think that would be a great move for Avowed. Maybe in the future, if they're like after this next one, hey, we want to expand or whatever. I think ultimately do what size makes sense for you. I know at one point they were thinking about doing co-op and they're like, it didn't make sense for the game we were making. So we cut co-op and I'm like, cool, that's great. I love hearing that. Mm -hmm. Like knowing knowing how to limit yourself is a very important sign of a good development studio, which you don't always see. Um, and so I think that in general is a good sign for them. Yeah. I think as you said there, like the feature creep, uh, is what I think what you're referring to is like having like yeah. too many half baked ideas where this feels very much like they're going like, right, we know exactly the kind of game we want to make. And this is what fits in that kind of game structure. So yeah, yeah. no, again, I think this is uh, this is a really good sign for me. Uh, like, like you said, I don't need another Skyrim when Bethesda are already working on Elder Scrolls six. Like I've got, yep. I've got that coming in the future. Let's see what Obsidian do with this on their own. Obsidian kind of a slept on studio, mm. if we're being honest. Yeah, I, I think I think so. If we if we look at what they've oh. done since they were brought into Xbox specifically as well, mm -hmm. like compared to 
you know, we're still sitting here waiting for a lot of games from certain other studios. If you look at Obsidian, they've they've actually delivered like once uh, grounded, grounded Outer Worlds Avowed is going to come. Um, yeah. Were they Pentamen Outer as well? Pentamen. Mm-hmm. The Outer Worlds DLC as well. If you want, yeah. Outer Worlds DLC. It. it didn't. Out, was there not an Outer Worlds two? It got, uh, got announced. Announced. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, got was, announced. That was, that was, that was a weird announcement, no? Or did that get announced recently? Or was that announced a while ago? That was announced a while was ago. It, I thought it was a while oh, ago. Okay, because yeah. I just saw mm. stories about this and I didn't remember it getting announced. Okay, that makes a lot yeah, more yeah. sense because I was like, this is out of nowhere. We just had E3 or whatever. No, do you know that what I think so it is? is because, because of Valve's coming, now the conversation yeah. around, mm, around, around them is more and more and more. But I just, yeah, I just think if we were to, maybe we'll do it as a, a MXM extra conversation and like rank... Um, all the studios bought so far and what they've delivered i think obsidian would actually come out on top higher than we would I think so i mean in terms of like, their purchases yeah. they've put out the most since bought right mm -hmm. yeah i think so because bethesda like death loop and all that stuff was already already made in the production yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, but I maybe, think. maybe that's the same case with Outer Worlds and we just didn't know Outer it. Worlds was already in production because yeah. I think it came out before they bought or like they got bought while it was already announced to come out and it still came out on PlayStation that was like a big news or whatever yeah, yeah. Mm. Outer Worlds got nines and eights as well remember yeah mm -hmm. so I think that's the other thing where I'm like come on Avowed be good be good like I'm I'm, uh, I'm hopeful I have I'm very faith. very very hopeful I'm very very hopeful all right, moving on. Uh, Miyazaki says that making Elden Ring easier would break the game as Shadow of the El Erd Tree, Eld Erd Tree launches. Erd. Um, I'm not even going to read the, the statement here. I I can, as the Elden Ring Lord, now nah, I can speak mm -hmm. on this perfectly. Elden Ring Lord, that's mm -hmm. what. <laughs> yep. Lord, okay. Am yep. I not a lord? You're, yep. I killed. I killed the other Elden Lord, so I'm the Elden Lord now. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You killed that's the other beast. Happened. Of I course. Did. Why are you saying of course? That's what happened. Yeah, you are a lord. That is factual. I mean, I was a lord. Thank you. Um, yeah. He's 100% right. I don't need to read the statement. I, I used to think that these games need the easy mode. They do not. What they need is a co-op mode. A seamless co-op mode is what makes this game... The, di the difference between... It doesn't need an easy mode. doesn't yeah. need a, a, a slider. doesn't need any of that. It just needs a drop-in, drop-out co-op seamless mode in some aspect and this game will this game's already the biggest one of the biggest games in the goddamn world but this game will explode even more because you're going to have people who are like i don't like these games and they're going to be able to do what i did when i played with jay and it's a case of you hit and you feel like you're doing something and mm -hmm. you're doing absolutely nothing yeah. but it feels like you are and you still have that sense of achievement yeah so talking of that uh i don't know if you saw it i don't think we put it in the article here at all but um there was talk that miyazaki did say that he had seen the seamless co-op and yeah. while the game wasn't designed around that he did see how much people are enjoying it uh so it is something they are going to look at in the future so maybe in their next game we could see elden ring 2 with seamless co-op i hope so I really do. Uh, whatever. Just, I don't even care. I don't even care if it's not Elden Ring. Like whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever next, after this batch of of uh, Souls like games come out, whatever yeah. the next batch of games that come out, they all need to have seamless co op. Yeah, I, I I do think even if it's not fully seamless co op, something better than the system they have right now because the system they have for like co op. If you want to play co op with a friend is atrocious. You have to yeah. replay certain areas multiple times. Um, the having to like rejoin every oh, it like sucks. yeah it's, just, it's like come yeah. on <laughs> at least let me just load back in with them yeah. don't make it like they have to even if you still want to take away like one of the, I mean, the the things like yeah i think there will be like it, i have no doubt if he does a seamless co-op there will be negatives to having to playing it co-op it just mm -hmm. it's the way he does oh. it and it makes sense right because co-op is going to make you're going to have a whole another person the game's going to be quote-unquote easier whatever the case is cool just make it easier to do the co-op because i think that's very off-putting in types of, in these types of games for people who are like i want to play this with a friend you go in you do the furlong fingers or whatever they're called mm -hmm. and it's just it's not an engaging system for co-op no i i totally agree with yeah it's just I, the one thing that put me off plan with you despawn 
Hmm? Because like, I'm having to figure it out to download the whole thing. You saw me yeah. today trying to do the fucking Resident Evil 2 randomizer. I'm an old man when it comes to mods. Yeah. I'm so bad at it. Crash, please don't die on us. Please don't die on the podcast. Please. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't you get die. Use. Um, you get views. You get views. Think about the views. It would give views. It would give views. Uh, um, definitely clip out. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, but I will not hold my breath. Yeah. I will say that. I yeah, and going back to the original article, like I agree, like as somebody who doesn't get on very well with a lot of Souls like games, uh, this game does not need to be easier. I think that's like I think there are definitely talks about like the accessibility side of it that could definitely be uh discussed, but for the gameplay itself, I think yeah, it doesn't need an easy mode. Like the ninety percent of the game is very much about like overcoming those challenges. So, yeah, I think stick with the level of difficulty that you've got as your standard. Um, yeah, just make co-op easier. Yeah, and they've added stuff that people have wanted um, that people are like, you shouldn't do. They've added, like, indicators of where NPCs are now. Mm -hmm. You unlock big story beats. Sometimes they'll it was confusing before, and they're like, this is where you have to go. There's a little red mark now. You can't confuse her or whatever. So they've added stuff that have been, quote-unquote, against what the game is like, and it doesn't ruin the game. Um, it's, like, I think as long as it doesn't ruin the community aspect, because that is a really big thing about what the game is built on, you know, getting other people's help, and communicating with other people contrary to what people say like the summoning is the biggest part ever since demon souls was first showed uh the very first souls game the very first trailer if i'm not mistaken if not the second trailer but i think it's the first trailer showed somebody summoning so i don't think you make the argument that you shouldn't summon and stuff like mm -hmm. that right mm -hmm. oh, bro, that's a whole different conversation i'm not even yeah. getting into whatever yeah. gatekeepers in um, video games just no Weird behavior. Weird behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next up, one that I'm excited for. Uh, Tomb Raider. Lara Croft is the newest survivor joining Dead by Daylight's Rockstar. Um, we've all played Dead by Daylight together, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to bring me back. I don't know if it's going to bring you guys back. Um, I'm always looking for an excuse to go back and play this game, if I'm honest. Um, so, yeah, me and Haley actually really enjoyed this game as well. We played quite a bit of it together, so... I'm wondering if this will get her back in. Obviously, I've got the Resident Evil skins as well, uh, characters as well already. Um, so yeah, I like supporting characters that I care about. And Lara Croft, weirdly, one of the most important characters in the MC Fixer. If, we were, if it was an MC Fixer universe, trust me, I tried to get that lady's uh, top off many times with cheat codes that don't exist. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm just a young boy. Don't blame me. Don't blame me, all right? Um, so is this yeah, the... I'm going to say, is this the the fgu the fixer gaming universe no 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 no, we're not doing no, that. no okay no, no um but yeah this was obviously i saw a bunch of rumors about this coming out ages ago um july 16th she will drop um i'll be away so i won't be able to play as soon as she drops but i'll make sure i pick her pick her up by on my laptop or whatever um she's got some new perks which is cool uh faster vaults by 20 percent, which makes perfect sense for um but the her character, character yeah. which is always nice. I do feel like behavior do quite a good job in making sense in their world to the characters they put in, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah, like it never feels like anyone's shoehorned in when it comes to their perk systems and uh, abilities. Like it always definitely feels like, yeah, no, that makes total sense, A, within their world, and B, for the characters themselves, or, or the monsters, uh, depending on uh, which side you're playing as uh, and what they are. But yeah, no, I'm... I don't think this is enough to get me back into Dead by Daylight because uh, Dead by Daylight is a weird one. Like, I love playing it with friends, but I hate playing it with randoms. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. So, yeah, no, I don't think this is like, I don't think there's ever going to be a single DLC that they announce that's going to be like, I must become a Dead by Daylight gamer. Uh, but mm. no, I like, I'm excited for the people that are excited about it. Like, you know. Right, more, the game just keeps in. growing. It's it nuts. Does. Yeah. Like, I'm always willing to jump back in. Yeah, like I said, but yeah, I'm always like, if we were down to just like, all right, we got a free evening, let's all just play DVD. I'm in, I'm here for it. Uh, but yeah, no, like again, nothing that's going to be like, I'm going to be the diehard dead by streamer going forwards. Yeah, You're too busy for that now. You've got a new job. You ain't got time to be a streamer anymore. Yeah. Okay, okay. Can, uh, <laughs> you think a character like this could ever pull somebody in who's played it before to like get them back to being a complete regular? I mean, I think that's always the goal, right? Mm -hmm. 
Like I feel like I think new characters, like, new players, yeah. But like, do you think an old player who's played Dead by Daylight and knows what yeah, it's I think all that's about? The goal. I don't think it is think so? always so much to get new okay. players. I think it's more to get laps players a lot more of the time because mm. they're used to already spending money in the game. Right? Me, mm. I played the game, enjoyed it, spent way too much money on the Resident Evil characters. By the way, same. way too much. And I think it's probably the same for this. I'll probably buy this because it's a char- an iconic character that I care about. Um, and to be honest with you, it, yeah, it just feels like one of those games where I'm like, I'll jump back in, I'll probably play it for a week, and then I'll uninstall it again, and then they'll announce another character that I care about, and we'll play we'll play Mario Go Around again. Like, literally, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm always down to try it. I always like it when they come with maps. I don't believe she comes with her own no. um, map, Isn't, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not too um, sure, because I've, all I've seen so far of her is the stuff that's been popping up in the public test build. Uh, mm. So just the odd clip here and there. But uh, yeah, I don't know what the official announcement... I don't think there's been an actual official announcement. Yeah, like... No, it is. It's out on IGN and everything, officially. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Trailer it and got everything. Leaked, uh, so. oh, I don't, okay. there's, I don't think... There, there's, there's a whole video. Um, yeah, I don't think it'll be a map. Apparently, the next big like drop for them is going to be... Uh, okay. Castlevania? Maybe they have yeah. the Castlevania one or the Dungeons yeah, & Dragons Castlevania. one? Yeah. yeah, so the Castlevania one's the next one. I don't know if the okay. Dungeons & Dragons one... I think the Dungeon and Dragon one's already out and that has a map out and then you kill it. Oh, okay. Um, and then Castlevania is like the next big one. So I assume that Lara Croft doesn't come with a map in that case. That makes sense. Fair enough. Despawn, you'll be happy. Starfield <laughs> on Xbox Series S can run at 60 FPS thanks to a mod. Uh, this was verified by Digital Foundry. Obviously, some of the best in the business when it comes to frame rates and graphical fidelity and things of that nature um yeah there's a mod out there that exists that I, I, this just boggles my mind i'm not gonna lie stuff like this confuses the hell out of me okay. like how has a bunch of people modding the game got it to run at 60 fps but the devs can't so what? i don't understand it i'm not again i don't make games i'm not trying to like uh, belittle how hard it must be to make a game but i'm just it just confuses me so I can I can answer that question. Uh, the mod, while uncapping the frame rate and letting you do the base sixty, drops the game to seven twenty. Uh, so I highly imagine Bethesda have gone. Yeah, we can get you sixty frames a second, but it's gonna look like dog water. Um, so they were like, yeah, you know what? It's not worth it. Let's just cap it at thirty, leave it at that, and uh, yeah. But the modders have obviously removed that cap. So oh, while, it, while it's great, there are a lot of caveats to it. Gotcha. Like everything when it comes to modding. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <sighs> Chris, yeah. you got nothing to add on that, right? <laughs> You're going to go back to play no. it at 60 frames? <laughs> no. I'll play it on my PC at 60 frames and 1440p. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Smart. Smart play. Uh, last but not least, uh, changes to Forza Horizon 4's festival playlist. Uh, and delisting from digital stores starting today june 25th uh forza horizon 4's dlc gets delisted from multiple platforms meaning that only forza horizon 4 standard and deluxe and older versions will be able to available for purchase from this day until delisting happens on december 15th uh forza horizon 4 will be delisted from stores and game pass this means the game and its additional content will no longer be available for purchase. Players already own the game and its content will be able to download and play it as normal, including its offline, online and multiplayer features. Physical copies of the game purchased after this date will also work and will be able to use in online and will be able to use online features. If you played Forza Horizon 4 through Game Pass and purchased DLC for it, uh, worry not by having an active, fully paid not discounted Xbox Game Pass subscription on the 6th of the 25th, which is today, we will be eligible to receive a game token if you have purchased any extra content for Forza Horizon 4 through your Xbox Message Center. Codes will start to be delivered in the following days. Huh? Why is this getting delisted so early? Um, well, this is four, not five. Music. It's I licensing. Mean, it's 100% licensing. Yeah. It has to be, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's, yeah. I imagine, I imagine there's, because with it, with things like this, there's going to be a discussion that happens internally. It's like, right, how many people are playing it of compared course. to how much does it cost to relicense everything? Is it worth the, the per, like, is it worth it? And they've got to that point now before where they've just gone, 
no, it's not worth it anymore. Um, yeah. So that's why it'll stay online. The servers will be up. Uh, you can't play it on Game Pass because, again, there'll be licensing agreements as part of that. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's the whole reason behind it. Yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Doesn't mean I like it, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, uh, who's who's playing 4 when 5 is there? No, I 100% agree with you, but there will be people out there that, that will. It's so, also... Sometimes you won't go down memory lane, you know? Yeah. You won't go back to four. As someone who's trying to play Resident Evil OG right now, it's a fucking bowl lake. Mm-hmm. And I'm, not, I'm trying not to swear as much on the podcast, but oh my God, emulators and all of these things are such a pain in the butt. It is ridiculous. I just want to do a full run through of every single Resident Evil game in chronological order. Why do you have to make it so hard for me to play these OG games? You have to download the emulator, the ROM, the BIOS. You got to mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. As soon as we got to BIOS, I stopped listening. I was like, I'm done. Yeah. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not interested. But yeah. Let's go um, buy a PlayStation. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Forza Horizon 4. If you are someone that wants to preserve games and wants to be able to play this game, it is out there. You'll be able to pick up a physical copy relatively easy. So I want to s- and do just that. Yeah, I also want to say I think there is a massive discount on it at the moment as well. Yeah, it makes uh, sense. I can't remember. Did they if add you, it to... Yeah, £10. If you bought DLC and you own it on Game Pass, if I'm not mistaken, you do... They will yeah, send the tokens. That's what they're saying. They're sending yeah. the tokens, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're sending okay. the tokens. So, yeah, so I'm looking um, at Steam. It's 10 uh, So yeah, okay. if you want it, go grab it. Uh, let's jump into uh, Guess That Game, shall we, boys? This is the game show where you guys will have to ask yes or no questions. The game that I have picked, I will put one minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Despawn, how are you feeling? Nervous. You well, let me tell you the scores. Let me tell you the scores, all right? Let me tell you the scores. Do you have so to? We've got Crash sitting on seven points. Me sitting at five points, you despawn sitting at four points, and Matt P sitting at three points. Uh, all right, let me get the Wikipedia up real quickly. Yeah. Um, More importantly, while you're doing that, Crush, you're, you're excited to get another point lead of ev- on everyone this week? <laughs> I'm getting it this week. You know what I mean, Sam? <laughs> okay, okay. Look, what? you might do okay. I might. I might just pull it randomly out of the heart, yeah. You, you might do okay. I you haven't gotten it okay. every week. I've, I'm pretty sure there's a week. I don't know if this go around where you've gotten it and I haven't gotten the point. Mm. It has to have been. Okay, Maybe. are we ready, boys? No, go ahead. All right, three. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. wait. You're going first Ooh. and then they spawn. Three, okay. two, one, go. 360? No. Xbox One. Yes. Uh, EA. No. Exclusive. No. Have I played it? Yes. Have I played it? You, no, I don't think you. Yes, yes, yes. You played the series. Yes. Okay. Series. Yes. A big yes. Don't play around. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, strategy game. No. FPS. No. RPG? Yes. Uh, single player only? Yes. Wow. Fantasy? No. Uh, guns? Yes. Okay. Sci fi? No. Um, You're a minute. Square? Enix? No. Okay. Oh, uh, wow, wow, wow. Third person? Yeah. Uh, Capcom? No. Activision? <laughs> no. Um, Wait, what'd you say? Activision. No. Uh, Bethesda? No. I'll give you 10 more seconds. Okay. Uh, uh, first person, I don't know. No. Um, male protagonist? Yep. That's time. Okay. Let's get the recap then. So, Xbox One era. Yep. Uh, RPG, did we say? Yep. Um, guns? Third person. 
Yep, guns, third person, male protagonist. Male protagonist. I've definitely played the series. Yes. So it's a series. Yes. Uh, we didn't get the studio. <laughs> no. No. It's not sci-fi. It's not, not right. fantasy. Did we say if it's exclusive or not? Yes, you did, yeah. but it's not exclusive. Not exclusive. Not exclusive. Uh, a non-sci-fi, non-fantasy RPG with a male protagonist. That's third person. A third person Xbox One era. Xbox One. I just want to put it out there. G Spot completely <laughs> changes me completely. All right, all right. Wow. Well, I'm pushing you for answers. Okay. Come on. Um, I need answers. I need answers. Write something down or give me an answer. Crash in three, two, one. Give me a game. It's not this because it was this previously, but it's the only thing that's coming to mind and it's not even accurate. I know it's 100% not this, just cause. It's the only thing that's coming to mind right now and it's not Square Enix. So it's I know it's not this. Okay. No. I know. Yeah, yeah. Just cause. <laughs> It's not just cars now. Um, I wonder if I'm going to get in trouble for this. Probably. We'll find out in a second. Um, Assassin's Creed? RPG? There's, uh, there's definitely big RPG elements to some of the Assassin's Creed. I you would got slap you if you call it Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed, you yeah, call it Assassin's Creed RP- I, you're, you're terrible. Yeah, it was the like a like- dragon. What are we angry about here? Come on. Nothing. I'm trying Crash? to think of something to be angry about, and I can't. No, I think you were right. I don't, yeah. you were just, I don't think you were wrong about anything. Nah. Okay, I'm just wanting to make sure, you know? Yeah. I'm just, I'm going, I'm going directly uh, off wait. of the... Go on. Yeah, no, 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 you're right. You're right. Oh, what was you going to say? What was you going to say? It's not sci-fi or fantasy. It is an RPG. It's not. It's, yeah. yeah. There is guns. There is definitely guns. And I was yeah. basing it off of the first game, so I didn't know if you okay. played the first game, Dees, but I don't no. think you did. See? Yeah. So I could have really tricked you because I knew that answer. Okay. But you both suck. So the scores stay exactly the same. Wah, 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 wah. Um, no questions this week, boys. <gasps> Literally, None. we've never had that happen in a really long time. It could be because we're recording back to back pretty early-ish, um, but no questions this week in Fix's Sack. Remember, you can email in my Xbox and me podcast at gmail.com or if you really want to, you can hit us up in the Discord. Make sure you join the Discord if you haven't already um, and ask your questions or hit us up on Twitter with the hashtag MXAM. Um, we also have no new podcast reviews, unfortunately, in the UK, um, which oh. hurts a lot. But that's None over here either. It is. There's going to be at least understand. one understand. granny out there to kick down the stairs, surely. It does. There surely has to be. Um, next plug, 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 and get yourself out of it. Crash, what you got to plug this week, dude? Questions. I'm going to plug in questions. If you listen to this and at any point during a podcast now or in the future, you have a question in the middle of a podcast, stop listening to it for a second or keep it playing. Open up Discord and just drop it there or drop it in a YouTube comment or tweet it at Fix. Why at me? <laughs> God, I don't want to get notifications. <laughs> Next one, what you got to plug this week? Uh, I'm going to plug um, Twitch. My Xbox and me. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash my Xbox and me. I'm going to try and stream this week. I'm going to make some time. Um, well, why so- don't we play Thing with Jiggy? Oh, you want to play a way out, don't you? You don't have to, but I'm just saying, why don't we play a way out? Let's do it. All right. We'll be playing All a way we'll out. We'll figure out a day. Oh, we'll have all, we'll we'll, by the time you guys are listening to this, we will have already played a way out, and you should have gone and watch not. it. Might have been the weekend. Yeah, true, true. But yeah, go check it out. Twitch.tv forward slash my Xbox and me, and YouTube.com forward slash my Xbox and me. Do it. Uh, Do it. Yeah, you can find me everywhere at MC Fixer. Um, yeah, I haven't really got anything to plug. I'll be honest. Everyone tweet at Matt P Video asking him to come back to the podcast so we can sort out things because we got a lot of things to sort out so everyone do that for me right say fix has yep. said please come back to the podcast he misses you yeah at matt p video please come home hashtag come home hashtag come home until next time we'll love you leave you see you later good boy